It's on now. Is it on? Okay. Before I, I officially open the meeting tonight, uh, let council know there is a special meeting following this regular meeting. For the audience, for the uh, citizens listening, tonight we will be implementing a new electronic voting system to cast our votes using our iPads. This will be helpful because it will connect directly with the software that we currently use to record all the agendas and minutes from our council meetings. After we have cast all our votes electronically, the information will be displayed on the screen for the public to see, both here in the council chambers and on your computer screen for those who are watching at home. I'm just asking the council to be sure you have joined, uh, you have pressed the join on your iPads, okay? So with that, I'll call to order Monday, October 6, 2014, council meeting. Please join Councilman Holman in the Pledge of Allegiance and stay standing for invocations. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We thank you, Lord, for the many opportunities and the many people that have made Goodyear what it is today and continue to work and continue to strive to make our city, the city of Goodyear, the very best it can be. We appreciate as things are changing and the world churns around us that you're giving us the strength to meet those challenges. And we ask you, please, give us the guidance and the wisdom to do the best that is possible with given the nature of the world today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Councilman Holman. All right, and as I see, we're all at the dais, and we'll begin. The first thing we'll go to is communications. We have two communication items tonight. The first item is a presentation on the new American Legion Charter. Rob Bohr, assistant to the mayor, will introduce. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, you'll all remember back in the August 18th regular meeting, uh, James Burke came forward and, and during the public comment period and expressed his interest in, in uh, establishing an American Legion in Goodyear. Uh, he since then has made some, some progress along the way, and he put in a request to come and, and present to council during the communication items um, to, to tell you about that progress and, and hopefully get, uh, get a photo with his official charter that he's now received. Um, you'll see, I, I've got the opportunity to talk to James since, uh, since he presented, and uh, you'll, you'll definitely see how excited and, and uh, how much energy he has towards, towards establishing this, this American Legion in Goodyear post-143. Um, so we'd like to have James up and, and tell us a little bit about his plans for, for the American Legion in Goodyear. Thank you. Welcome, Mr. Burke. Thank you, Mayor, Council Members. Thank you for allowing me to be here. Since the last visit, Commander John and myself have now, we have received our charter, and so now we're official. Uh, we've gone from 15 members to 30 members. We now have an auxiliary charter, and we're working on our Sons of the American Legion and our Legion Riders. And the Legion Riders, what we do is they're almost like the Patriot Guard, where we escort the veterans, good and bad, some from the airport and some at the cemeteries. We just hosted... Um, as you all know, just had the traveling Vietnam Wall, and we held security for the five days, and at many, many hours and many people it took to organize that, but we did uh, the, the security end of it. So uh, we're appreciative to everything that everybody's done. Um, again, we're just letting you all know that we're here. We're here to stay. We're working on our membership. We're working on good things with the community and the veterans, and um, I just want to say we did it, and I just wanted to let you all know that. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. 
Mr. Burke, we thank you. We know that you're very ambitious and enthusiastic about this. And having been to the wall today and Monday and today, uh, thank you very much for your service. Um, it, uh, you know how it affected many people that were there. It was an important time for us in good years, so thank you. Do you want the mayor in your picture? No, do you want the council in your picture? Oh, Is that what you want? Everybody here. All right. Oh, all right. Very quickly. Uh, let's go this way. All right. We do it a little differently, so you'll have to come up here. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So, okay. So we kind of line up and you get there. Here again. Congratulations. Got us all in? Can you nope. tell? Nope. Oh no! No. We got more. Coming. Why don't you put something on, buddy, on this side too? Okay, he's gonna so, he's gonna put you. Uh, are we? Okay. Uh, Can you get them all in? No. I want to see Wally because I'm the shortest one of all. <laughs> I could flash it to you real quick. Oh, oh. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So if someone wants to join, what should they do? Okay. Welcome aboard. Congratulations. Welcome aboard. Well, if you're already a member, do you have to do another application? You just transfer. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, the next communication item is a proclamation for the National Arts and Humanities Month. Gailene Oslansky. Oh, yeah, I, I have to do it once in a while. Arts and Culture Coordinator to present. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm Gailene Oslansky, Arts and Culture Coordinator. Tonight I'm here for National Arts and Humanities Month. Goodyear Arts and Culture joins thousands of arts, and organi arts organizations and communities across the nation in celebrating National Arts and Humanities Month. This October, the Goodyear Arts and Culture Commission will carry this message to the people of Goodyear through activities that honor the efforts of artists, historians, teachers, and cultural groups working to make the arts and humanities part of everyone's lives. If you give me a moment, please, we're going to do a slideshow here. All right. Tonight, I have a short slideshow for you that highlights the great things happening in Goodyear through arts and culture activities. To celebrate tonight, we have many Goodyear residents with us that are directly involved with the arts in our city. When I say your name, please stand and remain standing to be recognized. We have actor Gia DeYoung. She participates in our community theater group. We have actor Ella D. Young. She also participates in our community theater group. We have Commissioner Melinda Donovan, who's a docent and on our Arts and Culture Commission. We have artist Dave Finley. His work is found on the front cover of our general plan. We have artist and educator Deborah Goley, who teaches many arts classes here in our city. We also have artist Duval Goley. He is a recipient of our Mayor Select Scholarship. We have actor Rex Lambert. He participates in our community theater group. We have director of West Valley Arts Council, Bernadette Mills. We have artist Gabby Mills, who painted the Tell of Two Cities float, and artist Sophia Mills, who also painted on the Tell of Two Cities float. We have commissioner Karen Olson, who is an educator in our Arts and Culture Commission. And we have our arts volunteer, Rosemary Putnam. Please, everyone stand. <laughs> the 
These individuals are why arts are, are so strong in our city. Thank you to everyone that came tonight, and thank you for all you do for the arts. Everyone in the community is encouraged to participate in what has become this country's largest annual collective celebration of the arts and humanities. Special events planned for National Arts and Humanities Month in Goodyear include Seasons of the Southwest Art Show at Goodyear Branch Library. There's also an artist reception planned for October 17th. The art will be on display all month. We have our fall concert series at Goodyear Community Park. We have the group Outside the Line on October 11th and Big Pete Pearson on October 18th. We have the Fall Festival Creation Station, which will be at the Goodyear Ballpark. We have our Hot Coffee Lecture Series that's very popular at Total Wine, and that'll be on October 28th. And we also sent out our call to artists for our Mayor Select Youth Arts Scholarship Program. I now ask Mayor Laura to proclaim October as National Arts and Humanities Month in Goodyear. See how cleverly I came back to my seat because I, know, I I'm realized sorry. I was we trying no, to go. We quickly. no longer we're so sophisticated. We no longer have the microphone. I can put it so. Here we go. <laughs> National Arts and Humanities Month, October 2014. Whereas the month of October has been recognized as National Arts and Humanities Month by thousands of arts and cultural organizations, communities, and states across the country, as well as by the White House and Congress for more than two decades, and whereas the arts and humanities embody much of the accumulated wisdom, intellect, and imagination of humankind, and whereas the arts and humanities enhance and enrich the lives of every American, and whereas the arts and humanities play a unique role in the lives of our families, our communities, our country, and whereas the nonprofit arts industry also strengthens our economy by generating $135.2 in total economic activity annually by supporting the full-time equivalent of 4.13 million jobs. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Georgia Lord, the mayor of the city of Goodyear, Arizona, do proclaim the month of October 2014 as a National Arts and Humanities Month in the city of Goodyear, and I call upon our citizens to celebrate and promote the arts and culture in our nation, to specifically encourage the greater participation by all those said citizens in taking action for the arts and humanities in the towns and cities, given under my hand in these free United States and the city of Goodyear on the 6th day of October 2014, into which I have affixed, uh, uh, which I have caused the seal of the city of Goodyear to be affixed and have made this proclamation public. Congratulations. Thank you. And you, you left one name and picture off, and that's yours. Congratulations. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now is the time for a citizen who would like to address the city council on any non-agenda items. Do we have any cards? No, Mayor. All right. Does anyone in the audience wish to speak to the council? No? Then let's go right to the consent agenda. Will the city clerk please read consent agenda items 6.1 through 6.3 by title only? Item 6.1, approved draft minutes from a regular meeting and a special meeting held on September 8, 2014. Item 6.2, adopt resolution number 14-1664, authorizing the city manager or designee to execute an intergovernmental agreement between the city of Goodyear and Maricopa County for animal care and control services. Item 6.3, adopt resolution number 14-1666, ratifying the submission of the application for Arizona Homeland Security CBRNE response team sustainment grant by the fire department and authorizing the city manager or designee to execute any and all documents necessary for the award and administration of the grant. Thank you. Does anyone on the council wish uh, an item to be moved from the consent agenda? Mm -hmm. Then can I please have a motion to, uh, to approve the consent agenda? Motion. And a second.
I don't see anything on mine. Well, so where I'm am no I? Ours. That's ours either. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong screen. This gets so complicated, doesn't it? <laughs> it's big and what I love this. It's I can see it without my glasses. Okay, uh, so uh, it's been moved by Bill Stipp and second by uh, Sherry Lauritano. Uh, please cast your vote. Motion passes 7-0. Well, we did it, didn't we? We got, <laughs> we got through the first one. We'll, we'll see how the second one goes. All right, we're on to the business. So um, the first item on business, 7.1, to appoint new members to the Water Planning uh, Committee. Anna Dizak, Administrative Service Supervisor, to present. Anna. Good evening, Mayor and Council. The first item before you tonight is to appoint members to the Water Planning Committee. Um, the City Council Subcommittee for Boards, Commissions, and Committee Appointments, which consists of Council Members Osborne, Campbell, and Holman, met four times in early and mid-September to review application, hold interviews, and select members of the Water Planning Committee. Nine members and three alternates were selected through this process, most of whom are here with us tonight. These individuals represent various neighborhoods in the city's water and wastewater service area, including Canyon Trails, Cottonflower, Estrella, Estrella Vista, Cerville Village, and Wildflower. And two of the alternates represent different entities that serve customers within the city's water and wastewater service area. I'm pleased to say that there's a wide range of people serving on the Water Planning Committee. A few members have many years of professional experience in the water and wastewater industry, while some have just a personal interest in the topic. We have an individual who has served on a national organization's board of directors and on federal government committees. And for some members, this is their first time on a municipal committee. This mix is what we were hoping for when we started discussing the water planning committee. We wanted a group of people that were invested in the city's water and wastewater system with a wide range of experience, knowledge, and backgrounds. During the term of the committee, um, they will be looking at important issues like the integrated water master plan and the utility rate study. The water planning committee will begin meeting next week on Tuesday, October 14th at 6.30 p.m. here in the Justice Center. Meetings will be held on the second Tuesday of each month through April of next year, excluding November in observance of Veterans Day this year. The meetings will be public with live streaming and video. We already have a web page up for the water planning committee at goodyearaz.gov slash water committee. And this is where we'll post the committee's agendas, meeting information and links, and recent news articles about water. This web page is a part of our communications plan throughout the, uh, for the Water Planning Committee, which also includes press releases, social media posts, in focus articles, articles in community magazines, advertising, neighborhood emails, and community meetings, some of which we've already started doing when we started advertising for this committee. With that, I'm open to questions before I turn it over to our city clerk, Maureen Scott, to administer the oath of loyalty. Thank you. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? All right, then could I please have an motion a second to appoint Jason Battern, Mario Columbia, Tom Matheson, Peter Minuk, Dennis Passion, Leonard Scheid, Marge Sharp, Jerry Wilson, Bill Zendick as members of the Water Planning Committee for a term expiring September 30th 2015. Do I have a motion and a second? I have a motion by Councilman uh, Osborne, a second by Councilman Pazillo. Open for council discussion. I'm just going to say something. This is one of the most important committees. Um, water is being dis discussed all over the valley. So uh, this is a great time uh, to educate our citizens that are on the committee, then you can educate your neighbors. Um, and so I, I genuinely appreciate the time you're going to put into this. And we'll be watching closely, and especially, I think, the council to the results. So just wanted you to know that. So at this time, please cast your votes. Passes 7-0. Thank you. 7-0. Great. Thank you. All right. Now I need a motion and a second to appoint Jake Hinman, Lynn Pankrazy, 
Barbara Zenick as alternate members of the Water Planning Committee for a term expiring September 30th, 2015. Could I have a motion and a second, please? We don't have a box to vote. No, it's, um, it's already um, done. Mm -hmm. Holy oh. cow. It's in it. Uh, so there's been moved by Bill be Stiff <laughs> and second by Councilman Osborne. Um, open for council discussion. You're discussing, but not this. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Councilman Stiff. This is the last of the of the group, and I, I wanted to say to everyone, thank you very much for volunteering to serve on this. I know the mayor's comments regarding water, um, you know, are are uh, of paramount importance. However, the fact that we've got residents who come forward and wish to volunteer for these continues to speak volumes of the quality of the people that live in this city. So thank you very much for uh, your willingness to participate in this uh, very important process. Bill, thank you for those comments. I appreciate it. Councilman Lortano. I just really want to echo what was said because this is so important because living in the desert, this is the one thing we have to have for growth and it's the, one of the most important things that we really need to look at as we move forward. So thank you very much. Any other comments? All right. Then council, please cast your vote. Passes 7 0. Thank you very much. The city clerk now will administer the oath of loyalty. Come on up, please. Good group. Come on up. Okay, I'd like you to raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, I state your name. Columbia. Do solemnly affirm, Do solemnly affirm that, I will that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the of the United States and, the and, and the Constitution and laws of the state of Arizona, the state of Arizona that I will bear true faith. And allegiance to the same, and defend them against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of water planning committee member according to the best of my ability. So I do affirm. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for being on the committee. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank My you. Pleasure. All right. Let's go to point item seven point two to approve and purchase uh, to approve. Uh, to approve a purchase order for an integrated water master plan contract. Mark Holmes, water resource manager to present. Mark. Thank you, Mayor Lord, members of the council. Again, it's a pleasure to be before you this evening for such an important uh, cornerstone uh, integrated water master plan project. Again, the recommendation before you is to approve a purchase order for the integrated water master plan um, update with Corolla Engineering uh, in the amount of $601,509. Integrate Water Master Plan is a dynamic master plan, and it's based on various components within the city, uh, population and projections, economic development and growth, uh, redevelopment, uh, water supply availability and demand projections, drought management, uh, changes in water and wastewater treatment technologies through time, engineering and new water quality regulations passed both by federal and state uh, regulators. The uh, Integrated Water Master Plan was also defined in the, strategic, the City Strategic Act Action Plan and also falls under the various uh, components of the action plan. The fiscal resource management component, um, which is being addressed with the utility rate study. Economic vitality, which is um, some of the uh, alternative water supplies that you've seen come before you, such as the remediated groundwater. Sense of community, such as uh, proposed and future landscape demonstration projects, the landscapes that we're looking at and we're approving um, for our community. And quality of life, 
Um, these are water conservation programs that the citizens currently have access to, the home irrigation checkup and other things along those lines. The existing uh, integrated water master plan was approved by council in 2007 and it was based on information and projections that were determined in 2006 and which are now eight years old. Uh, since 2006 there have been several new significant uh, staff key findings um, that have raised new questions um, that will need to be answered uh, within this new plan update. So the next are going to be a series of some of these key findings. They're, they're not, this is not all inclusive. This is just several of the, of the key findings. Uh, so number one, for the first time, the city has developed a comprehensive groundwater model as part of its city um, renewal for its designation of assured water supply. And this model has identified some key findings that include, uh, number one, the staff key finding, there's not enough physical available groundwater or wet water, as we, re we re referred to, within the aquifer under the city for build out. Um, especially focusing down in the Rainbow Valley area. So we, the plan uh, needs to address where uh, will the needed physical wet water come from, how will it be transported, and what are the costs for that water supply and, and the transportation. Another st uh, key staff finding, the city does not have enough legal availability uh, water, which is the paper water, our assured water supply, uh, within its water portfolio for build out. So what new water supplies will be available for how long, and how much will these new water supplies cost? They'll need to be addressed in the plan. Next, uh, currently, the Arizona Department of Water Resources recognizes half of our city's CAP, uh, Central Arizona Project, water supplies. And what it boils down to is that we currently don't have the, avail the ability to directly deliver, treat, and distribute that water supply. So we don't control our own destiny. So as part of this plan, uh, we'll be addressing what are the most cost-effective ways or way uh, that the city should be delivering, treating, and delivering CAP water to the city. Based on economic development plans, commercial and industrial quarters are being further refined or defined. Another uh, staff key finding, post-recession, the types and timing of various commercial and industrial developments have been reassessed. So the plan needs to address what volumes of water resources, water and sewer infrastructure will be needed and what, what is the timing for these uh, improvements and what will the cost be. <coughs> We've talked uh, about this several times. Outdoor water consumption remains the highest consumptive use of all water within the city. And our staff key finding, uh, balancing water consumption with a limited water uh, supply, uh, prolonged projected drought, and the need to increase water efficiencies and sustainability while maintaining the expected quality of life within the city and the beauty of the city requires policy discussions. Uh, the plan will address what new water conservation and efficiency attributes are needed to effectively balance uh, these aspects. We've also touched on reclaim water. Um, reclaim water is a city's only constantly increasing renewable water supply. The value of this water supply has increased dramatically through the years and is now equal to the Central Arizona Project water value. So staff key findings, reclaim water is more efficiently used when recharged back into the aquifer and recovered for indirect potable reuse versus direct deliveries. Also reclaim water that is recharged in the aquifer builds that long-term storage bank account we've discussed and makes the city more drought proof. So the plan will need to address uh, what are the new practices and policies that need to be put in place to ensure the maximum and most efficient use of our reclaimed water supplies. And again, you probably have seen in every headline, uh, significant and prolonged drought. Uh, it seems to ever loom over the arid southwest uh, United States for potentially many years or decades to come. Another staff key finding would be uh, the Central Arizona Project water is 68% of our water portfolio. And inevitably, there, there will be shortages on the Colorado River. Um, and what will those intra impacts be to the city? So the plan will need to address how the city can ensure it is drought proof, meaning that we've taken this into consideration as an insurance policy so that while drought is still happening, we can have business as usual in the city. And lastly, uh, groundwater well production and water storage are critical components to ensure the city can meet summer peak demands and the required fire flow. 
uh, staff key finding based on the current groundwater well production and water storage capabilities. It is unclear if the system has enough reliability should one or even two of the largest water production wells go down, especially during the summer peak months of water demand. So the plan will need to address, should additional reliability be added to the system? And if so, where should it be added? And what would the infrastructure cost be? So integrated water master plan is, is basically comprised of uh, four key components. A water resources master plan, which is your water supplies. A water distribution master plan, which is your water treatment and delivery system to your customers. A wastewater system master plan, uh, which is comprised of your wastewater collection and treatment system. And lastly, your re reclaim water uh, master plan. And again, the integrated water master plan is an interdepartmental plan that coordinates between development services, economic development, engineering, water resources, environmental services, and finance. Uh, the Integrated Water Master Plan will evaluate these components for the short term, uh, which is 2025 year, midterm out to 2025, and build up for the city. And of course, just previously we had our, our uh, Water Planning Committee just sworn in, and they will be a part of this process. So the components from the Integrated Water Master Plan will be expedited uh, in the first phase of, a, of a updating the five-year CIP. That will then be uh, evaluated by our, our current utility rate study. Those two components will be brought before the Water Planning Committee and vetted through them, looking at all the options. Ultimately, um, the ultimate output will be a five-year proposed utility rate. Uh, the fiscal analysis, again, uh, Council approved uh, 720000 uh, for the IWMP in the Capital Improvement Plan for fiscal year 1415. The proposed contract for Crow Engineering came in under the CIP budget um, at $601,509. Um, this was done through requited, uh, a competitive request for proposal pro uh, process. Environmental Services Manager Mark Siemens and myself will be the co-project managers for this project. And lastly, the uh, community benefit. Um, the Integrated Water Master Plan update analysis will provide solutions that will allow the city to overcome the many water-related challenges that we just discussed and several other ones and continue to provide uh, the highest level of services to all of its customers. The Integrated Water Master Plan linked to the CIP, the Utility Rate Study, and the Water Planning Commission, and I apologize, committee, uh, will have the proposed activities evaluated with the company rates that will support these activities. And if approved, we'll keep the enterprise fund self-sustaining, as we've discussed. Of course, we'll be looking at optimizing investments, uh, minimizing our costs, maximizing the results of each investment, improving the, abil uh, the ability to analyze a range of alternatives, menu options to choose from, and ensuring sound financial revenue strategies. And with that, I would entertain any questions you may have. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Is there anyone in the audience that'd like to speak? Then could I please have a motion, a second, to approve the purchase order for integrated water master plan contract with Corello Engineering in the amount of 601509 I have a motion from Councilman Holman and a second from Councilman Stipp. Councilman, conversation? Vice Mayor? Just that I appreciate your efforts. I, I too, had been involved in AMWA at times, and, and I know how important it is to come up with this plan for long-range viability of our city and, actually, the state. So, uh, again, I appreciate your efforts in this area. Councilman uh, Osborne? Uh, just to, to echo um, Councilmember um, Pozzello's comments, but to also say that, you know, this really is a critical tool for our city. And um, there's been some development in the past that maybe we would have thought differently about 
when we see the needs that we have today. And, um, and I, I know that we all want smart growth. And so I appreciate that. And uh, I look forward to this committee um, being able to tackle some of the information that they're going to be seeing and, you know, all of us working together, not just for this council, but for future councils. You know, these are the critical things that um, we need to know to make decisions and that our citizens are going to rely upon. So thank you. Councilman Campbell? I have a question. Um, if I understand this correctly, we are going to authorize the expenditure of 601000 to do four master plans. Yes, it will be uh, four master plans and an all-encompassing integrated, it's integrated water master plan, will be four volumes, four right. volume set. And it has come in under the budgeted amount that we approved previously. Yes, that's correct. Um, how long do we anticipate that these four master plans will be in effect for us or will work for us? Five years, 20 years, probably not 20, but. That's a great question, Mayor Lord, uh, Councilmember Campbell. Um, if we start to grow, um, let's say in the next two or three years exponentially, let's say with growth just beyond expectations, we'll come back and potentially have to amend. Uh, on average growth, probably about five years. Uh, it's probably a, an industry rule of thumb. If we're growing as expected, probably a five year, and then coming back with an update. Oh, good. Um, unless something okay. dramatic changes, such as demand projections have changed. And obviously, uh, pre-recession, um, there was aggressive projections of, of growth, which now have changed in the last eight years. Um, where growth is going to occur has changed, and the items I discussed. But probably on average five years is about uh, a normal life of, a cat, of the Integrate Water Master Plan. All right, and then they would just do an update. Correct. Because we would have the basis already done that they would just have to add to Certainly, as we build Some of out. the components in the current Integrate Water, water Master Plan are still, uh, are still current. Okay. Um, uh, some of those things will be used. We'll stand uh, on those items and then build upon them and go forward. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councilman Stipp. Mark, this is, um, it's a big dollar amount, and I understand we're getting four, so I think, um, you know, if you do the math and break it down, but if you can just explain how this is different or similar to many of the other master plans that we have done in the city, the transportation master plan, the parks master plan, just for someone who's unfamiliar with with this process, is it? Sure, that's are there question. similarities? Um, Mayor Lord, Councilmember Stipp, um, again, Integrated Water Master Plan, it is a very dynamic and uh, very complex uh, plan. Um, say we're looking at a transportation plan at roads and travel uh, networks and so forth, um, and I'm not an engineer to explain it, focused on roadways and transportation. This uh, is focusing on very complex, uh, such as water supplies in the aquifer system. Uh, looking at infrastructure, uh, existing and improvements requirements. It's looking at all the various, it's actually building upon all the various plans that, um, such as a general plan update. These various plans looking at growth projections, uh, where we think demand is going to occur. Also wastewater systems. So it's looking at a very uh, comprehensive list of challenges and items that have to be analyzed. Data has to be collected, both on the wastewater side and the, and the water infrastructure side. Um, a lot of uh, town engineers are going to be looking at this. Um, so it is a very, one of the most complicated uh, plans out there uh, compared to a, a, well, a more focused uh, plan that's looking at maybe one specific subject. So this sounds like it's much more technical in nature rather than, I'm going to say philosophical, like the general plan that says we want this to be here. This is very technical and specific. So we wouldn't see giant, lar uh, giant community forums and that sort of thing to get at the technical issue of this, is that? Yes, this is a lot of engineering technical components. I think to kind of set the expectation for the community ahead that this is not like the others. Yes. And, back and to my Sesame Street days. And I think the complexity too is obviously we want to make sure that we can roll out these complicated uh, items, the analysis that was completed so that everybody understands what it is that it's saying, especially to the Water Planning Committee. Um, so they have these information and understand how it was calculated, it can make decisions, and obviously coming back before you, we all are on the same page, and that takes effort as well. Because uh, again, it's technical in nature, it's, very, it's a diverse uh, category of, of items that we're, that we're analyzing. Thanks. Great question, thank you. 
Councilman Osborne. Uh, one more question. So after the end of this process and these plans are put together, you'll be able to, I'm assuming, come to us and say, you know, after looking at all of this, and remind me, is purple pipe, I always get that confused, is purple pipe the pipe that does um, the water that is? Reclaimed water. Reclaimed, okay, so that's what I thought. So if you were to come back and say, you know what, for us to generate the best type of water for certain areas, we have to make policy that says purple pipe has to be in this area of our city with any development that comes forward. That's something that we could find out from this, correct? Mayor Lord, uh, Councilmember Osborne, that is exactly correct. We want to come back with those types of recommendations that may look at um, where we want to recharge uh, our reclaimed water or where uh, potentially there's an industrial corridor who has a need for some of this reclaimed water for industrial process of which is going to return 90% or more of that reclaimed water back to the city through the reclamation system. So those are the kind of recommendations for policy discussions we want to come back before you with. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Loretano. I have a question. One of the issues that we hear a lot and you've kept addressing, you've kept us up to date with is obviously the CAPR allocation and obviously nobody knows when or if with the continuing drought. Is that something that will be addressed in this plan like contingencies if it is cut, how it's cut, what we can do? Yes, uh, great question, Mayor Lord, uh, Council Member Lortano. Um, we want to incorporate um, within the Colorado River, the law of the river, and the 2007 shortage sharing agreement for the lower basin states. Um, we haven't talked about that a whole lot in detail. We want to have that included because we want to know, uh, based on scenarios in the future, if, say, the Colorado is cut by, say, 30% for five years, what effect will that have on us ordering uh, CAP water um, and trying to overcome those obstacles. So this plan will identify those scenarios, what we should be doing to make sure that we're not going to be impacted by those shortages, and even if we will be impacted based on the current law of the river. Very great question. All right, I, I have a question for you. Since this is what we call an integrated water master plan, my concern is we have two water companies in Goodyear. We have Liberty and we have Goodyear. So are we going to integrate the plan with them because this is a knowledge base for our customer and if we don't have that information, uh, then there are going to be a time that the city is going to be somewhat divided, kind of like the cattle and the, in, uh, the sheep, you know, years <laughs> ago. So uh, I, I'm, I'm very concerned and I'm not sure my concern should be there, but do we have anybody from the Liberty Company sitting on the uh, committee, mm -hmm. on this committee, or do we, are you going to be working with them uh, so we get a clear picture of not just um, the south of Goodyear, but the north? I call that collaboration. So I need your answer on that one. Great question, Mayor Lord. Uh, yes, the answer is yes. We're going to collaborate with um, our utility partner. Uh, it's, again, it's a private utility. It, it's, its regulatory oversight is done through the Arizona Corporation Commission. However, we do communicate. We, uh, we go out and we discuss various items of concern. Similarly, when we're planning, we want to work in collaboration and in tandem so we understand and they may learn some information about the offer they didn't understand before, helping them in their planning processes for where they want to put a new well. So the information we're producing is, is, while it's focused on Goodyear service area, it's aquifer wide, it's, it's the whole basin, so they can learn that information and we want to include them in the uh, relationship. For, so when we have meetings, um, when we're having the technical memorandum reviews and we're going over the information with the engineers and their analysis, we do want to have liberty. And then potentially um, maybe even Adamant, who is, uh, a, we're a bulk water delivery, uh, we're a customer of as a bulk water uh, customer to them. So they would learn information and maybe may adjust their planning efforts, which would only benefit us as well. Um, so that's a great question, and we definitely want to uh, continue with our great relationship with Liberty. And along with that, so we do a rate study, and we come out in the Goodyear side, and we already know this, that it's going to increase. I tell people every day, I think I've been telling them since I've been on this council, it's going to continue to increase. So do we kind of uh, work that through with them too and letting them know that, you know, we're doing rate increase and and see, because uh, it there can be an imbalance, and it could cause, without the information out there, on both sides of the cost of uh, concerned customers, so. 
Mayor Lord, that's not a great question. Um, similar to when they came before you and talked about their rate study before the Arizona Corporation Commission, we definitely will let them know about public processes for any uh, utility rate um, adjustments that the city would be going through. They would welcome to provide any comments. We definitely will give them a heads up from a, a collaborative effort and what activities we're currently working on. And I, I would like to recommend uh, to the city manager that it would be very good that we keep up this information current and the in focus of showing uh, the north side and the south side and, uh, and the, the progress on them so we don't have any confusion. Thank you, Mayor Lord. We will do that. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Please cast your vote. Passes seven zero. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. Great presentation. Let's go to seven point three. Is a business item to set public hearing pursuant to Section 147F of the Internal Revenue Service. Larry Lang, Finance Director, to present. Larry? Uh, thank you, Mayor. And I'll, I'll keep my comments fairly brief on this. Um, the property, the 100 acres that we own just north of our city center property, uh, is uh, was acquired in uh, 2004, I believe it was, and it was funded by general obligation bonds, by tax-exempt bonds. Uh, the city council has been looking at marketing that property for university purposes for quite some time, or for education purposes, excuse me, for, for quite some time, uh, currently under consideration for also for uh, the basis charter school, which is education purposes. And for, for us to dispose of the property that is uh, under these tax exempt bonds, we're required to have a public hearing, what's referred to in the tax law as a TEFRA hearing, uh, and that basically uh, is a public hearing to state that we intend to change the potential use of that property to include nonprofit education purposes. Resolution 14 1668 establishes that public hearing date to be on October 27th. Uh, and then tomorrow morning by 10 o'clock, we will uh, submit the notice to the Arizona Republic for the publication so that we can have the public hearing at that date. Take any questions you may have. Thank you. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. All right. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? Will the city clerk please read resolution 14-1668 by title only. Adopt resolution number 14-1668 calling a public hearing pursuant to section 147F of the Internal Revenue Code. Thank you. Could I have a motion and a second, please? I have a motion by Councilman Loritano and a second by Councilman Holman. Open for council discussion. Who would like to be first? Vice Mayor Pazillo. I just want to make sure I heard you right, Larry. Did you say it would be changed to a nonprofit educational institution? This will allow the usage to be for nonprofit educational institutions. That's correct. So if it was a for-profit, it won't work? That is correct. Okay. I just want to make sure. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, are we not allowed to use the name of the school? The basis school that we're, we're not allowed to talk about. Well, now that I put it out there, okay. Sorry about that. No, I mentioned it in my presentation. I thought also. you did. Yes. But I thought you did, but we because didn't. Because of that it up consideration here. now, but what we're looking at is the whole hundred acres. We're looking at the whole hundred acres. Because okay. we've really been looking at universities and, and other education right. on that property okay. over the years. Okay. And so this will make that available for all of the hundred okay. acres. So not just the one you mentioned, but yes. all, of all of it. Okay. Any other any other uh, discussion? Mayor. Vice Mayor. Just clarification note, but it has to be a non-profit school. That is accurate. Okay, so, okay. I just want to make sure it has to be non-profit, okay. All right, are you all set? Please cast your votes. Passes 
passes 7 0. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, we'll go on to 7.4 on the business agenda to amend Chapter 3 of the Goodyear City Code to create a standalone economic development department. Brian Dalkey, our city manager, to present. Mayor and Council, thank you very much for this opportunity. Tonight, the staff is management is recommending that Council adopt an ordinance to amend the code that does effectively recreate the economic development department. By way of history, it was in June of 2012 that I uh, actually it was management's recommendation is to combine economic development with the commun then community development department. And really the purpose was is we were struggling with uh, you know, the development side of the business and trying to increase customer service and trying to really evaluate where we were in, in working with the business community. And it gave management an opportunity to take both departments, put them under one, and be a direct report to the city manager. Uh, part of that was is we really needed an opportunity to look at where we're at. How are things working? Where are they not working? But it, it, it really uh, gave us an opportunity to, to do that. What we determined as part of that, and you'll hear that in a few minutes, is uh, balance wasn't really achieved there. The balance, when you have the two departments, uh, it, you know, there were some times where the former community development department would get more of its fair share of attention, less so on economic development. And, you know, that was one of the concerns as we were looking at it, kept trying to address. And then uh, as this kept going forward, a couple other things happened. One is, is there was something called focus on success. We had an opportunity to do that. And council did end up adopting that in February of 2014. And important to point out that part of that focus on success is when we approach that, we actually had um, uh, several business community leaders being part of that. We had representatives from the development community, education, manufacturing, large business, small business, finance, utilities, hotel, airport aviation, medical, and the Chamber of Commerce. Point being is that we had this leadership that came together and basically challenged us and put together a very aggressive economic development strategic plan. And council did adopt that, and that was uh, as listed here February of 2014. It's aggressive. Effectively, what that is is we ended up having 103 strategies over the next five years, 65 of which were short term, and we're about six months into that. So we're, uh, the workload increased significantly on the economic development department at the point where this was adopted. So um, fast forward as we were going through it, uh, we ended up, uh, uh, the uh, director ended up leaving Goodyear, uh, the city management ended up putting two people out of the city manager's office to go over there and really help determine how, where we needed to devote the resources to really continue to push the aggressive nature for economic development. So they, they have done that, and you know, some of the things that we found out is there, we were also challenged with, or given an opportunity, I should say, of given additional IDA funding. IDA funding is Industrial Development Authority. Other companies, manufacturing companies that use our Industrial Development Authority they pay into a marketing fund, has to be used for specific to economic development marketing. That allowed us $70,000 in additional money to augment, support, push forward the uh, uh, now aggressive economic development plan. So a lot of things are being expected uh, as far as performance, and it is, uh, and as you'll see here as we get into the development service side of the house, it does require in management's opinion that, that we recreate this economic development department. The link still needs to remain between the economic development department and the city manager so we can get, uh, be more closely connected to council on economic development items. So what about development services? The impacts with them, we know, you know some of the things that are happening as we're going through this and, and not in the slides here, but we're continually looking at our processes. You know we're working on project docs, for example, for electronic plan review. We have a front line, primarily front line and middle line um, staff that are working on process improvements right now. Um, they're delivering a couple of recommendations 
now as we're going through the, the lean training to see where can we uh, cut out processes. There's more work to be done as well. So the other side of that is, is when you get into looking at where some of the challenges can be in working most closely together, it's with the engineering department and development services. So much of that has to do with site plans with the entitlement processes as they go through platting and infrastructure and these types of things. So the goal would be assuming or if the economic development department is established, these two departments, engineering and development services, would now report to a deputy city manager. So as issues come up, it can be solved um, at, at that level with that deputy. It would require a lot less, quite frankly, in my time to, to be involved that as, in that as well. The other thing you'll see up here, development services is getting better or, or getting um, busier, I should say. When you look at the general plan will be before our public in November. And in the general plan, there are 165 actions, 74 short term over the next couple of years. We also know that they're trying to get the 2012 building code adopted. The zoning ordinance update, while we've done design guidelines to a point, there's still more work to be done as it relates to um, zoning. We have things like the sign ordinance, park standards, and, and we also have to get it more into design guidelines when we talk about metal buildings. When we talk about how much landscaping goes in parking lots, how it's located and also commercial centers, trees and commercial centers, where do we start to also get into redevelopment? So we, they have a lot of work on their plate as well. Finally, you get into Rainbow Valley, that place it's just south of the Estray area where it's going to be quite busy as well. So um, they have their work cut out for them. Um, and all of that still working on streamlining processes, evaluating staff workloads, where can we cut out um, uh, or improve efficiencies as well. So. Trust me, they're going to be quite busy as well. So that gets it to, really to the next steps and what we, if council does approve recreation of the economic development department, we will begin recruitment for that director. And the, but the other thing that's important to point out is economic development. When we merged the two groups in March of 2012, we also moved the economic development department out of city hall and over to this building here where they actually locate in the same facility as engineering and, and development services or the community development group, if you will. It will require a high level of coordination. The expectation is those three directors, economic development, development services, engineering, are meeting frequently. As there are issues, they get them resolved. Um, it is a team approach. And I think that uh, you know, we're very confident that this approach will work, especially with some of the, the um, a uh, recent hire, I look behind me and see our new engineering director um, who's already been engaged and already bringing us projects. Uh, but Mayor and Council, that concludes my presentation open for questions. Thank you. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? All right, will the city clerk please read resolution 14-1309 by title only, please. Adopt ordinance number 14-1309, amending chapter three, article 3-1, section 3-1-5, to create a standalone economic development department, providing for corrections, penalties, severability, and an effective date. Thank you. Could I please have a motion and a second? I have a motion by Councilman Campbell and a second by Councilman Holman. Okay, open for council discussion. Councilman Holman. I was delighted at the last bullet point, uh, city manager. I just would like to emphasize it. I think it should have been one of the first things stated. I think it should have been stated in the middle of the presentation as well as the end. And that is the high level of coordination between those or among those three departments. That's the only way we're going to get the um, the process streamlined to the point we want it. And if, if there is an extreme high level co uh, cooperation between those three departments. It's, and I know we've been working at it and working at it. I applaud that, but I think we've got to continue um, th that process. And the, the coordination, in my opinion, is key. Thank you. 
Vice Mayor? First of all, I appreciate the time. We spent a little over an hour going over this because I had some of the same issues that Council Member Holman had. And, and uh, you stressed that that's going to be the key, that there will be that uh, cooperation of all three departments because I, I think that's critical as we move forward, that they're all on the same pan page, you know, kind of seamless operations between the two so that we become truly business friendly as we grow you know, to the next level. So again, I, a lot of my questions regarding this were answered uh, as we sat down and talked over this. So uh, I'm in favor of this move. Councilman Osborne. You know, um, going from planning and zoning to being on this council for quite a few years, I've seen the silos. And um, when this came back in front of us to s split it up again, you know, my concern was, why it was told to us to bring them all together in the first place under one department. And that was because we were trying to get rid of the silos. We were trying to, you know, we were having issues with, with developers that were having troubles. We were, you know, on and on and on. And some of it I don't know was actually the structure of the department or if it was just the managing of people. And, and I hope that the fact that we're, we're separating this again and, and you, you have shown us all the great, um, uh, prospects that we have going forward, you know, with all of the, the goals and, you know, the a layout of a plan. Um, but I still think it's back to the communication of the people. And, and so, you know, if I can believe that the silos will not come back up and uh, the fact that the departments are all going to be housed together, correct? That's what you, you stated. Then I, I'm hoping that that communication is going to continue to get stronger and that we won't have the past problems as to why they all came together under one department in the first place because that's what I believed a couple years ago when we were doing this, you know, was this was going to be the answer to some of those issues. So um, I have a great deal of, um, um, I know that you watching over this department, I, I have uh, a belief that you'll be able to do that. I just want to make sure that future city managers down the line will, will be able to also be that same manager over a department where all these others go under deputies. And you and this city manager will be looking over this department. Is that kind of the hierarchy that you were explaining? Yeah, uh, Mayor, Council Member Osborne, uh, each city manager can you know, structure rep certain, certain reporting departments. Okay. I would answer it a couple of ways. The first is is by having engineering and development services under the same deputy. That resolves a lot of challenges because that, uh, again, the development processes, things like that, economic development is always going to be important. Economic development will pull those groups in at the very beginning of projects so they understand. You know, there's a, I would tell you there's a little bit of a misnomer that economic development makes promises. Um, there has to be communication there because sometimes that's the development community bless their hearts that you know are hearing certain things that, that uh, uh, need to be explained um, to, to really um, clear that up so it's all about communications with economic development with those other two departments going so far as to say that uh, uh, they will be meeting every two weeks or more often as needed the three of those directors and that will be in their work plans um, as far as a future, uh, the only thing I could say there is the culture that we're, we're creating there, the, you know, with a, uh, uh, knocking down um, any silos, if there are any, and the communications really building that and improving processes. That will be the focus that um, will help ensure this is going to be a long-term success. Councilman Loritano. I, I agree. I think the problem we've had before is communication, and, and we've heard from our business community and people trying to open business here that they've had problems having consistency and seamless service between the different departments. They'll go to one, be told something else, and, you know, it's just not seamless. And, and, and I do appreciate the fact that you, you try to bring them together to make it better for the businesses and seeing another way that you you are backing up and you are trying, you know, to bring it back and, and keep the communication, the meetings there. So I do appreciate the fact that you're willing to try something new to get to the end goal. And, and I do appreciate that with your staff. Thank you. Councilman Stipp. You know, the, 
the challenges that we've had have been the, you know, a bit, we've all talked about the communication, but the the key that we keep hearing from businesses over and over again is not at the leadership level of the department, but it's a little farther down. And the, the plans say one thing, but the inspector requires something else. And that problem has never gone away, no matter what we've tried to do. So I hope with uh, three um, new directors in, well, two of them sitting here tonight, in that, take that to heart and work at, um, at fixing this, because this we've gone back to exactly the way that it was a couple of years ago. That, that's what this ordinance does, it takes us right back. So effectively, we will be doing nothing than what we've always done in the past unless we make a change there. Um, so I you know, would stress that the only way that this is gonna be successful is if we pull from the street all the way up into the front office and get that, that part fixed. That's my first observation. Secondly is my, is my question. I realize it was in the staff report and I read it, but in the presentation we never discussed for the public that may or may not be listening. How are we paying for this? Uh, Mayor, Council Member Stipp uh, is listed in the staff report. It, uh, we're looking at it being uh, neutral as far as impact on the budget and how we're doing that is the deputy director, formerly uh, the development service deputy director, that will be used uh, for the primary funding of this and that would get the director level at the first quartile, kind of beginning in a salary. But we also have additional savings in, in the economic development project manager position. That is an unfilled position. It's those um, uh, funds are available to us if in fact we get um, someone with more credentials, more experience. So that would offset. Um, so that's what we're looking at is, is trying to um, stay uh, expense neutral, if you will. Are we not going to fill the, pro, the economic development project manager position then? Uh, the economic development project manager, that's a savings to date. That, that person left some time ago. So it's a savings that there that I'm talking about. Um, so that, that would be the goal there. But the other, quite frankly, is when the, assuming this does get approved tonight, we need to take a hard look as far as what that position needs to be. What should be their focus area? Uh, look at the team that they have there now. When are we going to fill it? So um, by the time that's filled, it'll be some months still down the road. And, you know, so at that point, yes, uh, the, the goal is, is to fill it. But right now, it is, it is not. It's those funds that are available for us. So next year, in theory, in that budget, and that position is filled, and this new director position is filled, there will actually be a cost of impact to the budget. That, that's correct. It, we're estimating, uh, if, if you compare uh, directly, that, that could be 10000 could be 20000 more for a director-level position, but that would be next year's budget, correct? Thanks. Councilman Campbell. Thank you, um, Mr. City Manager. I thank you for bringing this back uh, to us and I appreciate what you tried to do a couple of years ago. It's hard to bring all of those departments together because they just don't mesh, and I don't know why they don't mesh, and we've tried to get them to mesh, and I have hope that staff will be willing to change the way perhaps they think or whatever it takes to get us on one page. It's important that we have a standalone economic development department because economic development is the heartbeat of this city. Without it, we cannot grow. And we have got to have people in place aggressively going after whatever we need to do to get the businesses to come here, regardless of everything else that's going on. But it's just such a huge job. We saw some of our design guidelines redone, which I certainly appreciate that happening. We have where they had a conference with the developers and everybody was in the same room so that they could know what was going on with their project at the very beginning. And that was very important because nothing was more frustrating than to have someone tell you you could do it this way and then someone else tell you you had to do it that way. And I've seen the yellow line in the middle of a room that had nothing to do with anything that cost that person $5,000 because the inspector said you got to have an arrow that points to a door that doesn't go outside. So all of that combined, we're hoping with this new director that staff knows we are very 
adamant that we want this to work, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. But we need to get moving and get going because we, we're, we're already behind, I'm sorry to say. And that's, I'm done, Mayor. Thank you. All right, my turn? Yes, ma'am. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for bringing it to the table and making a change. It's not easy when you make a decision right. to go one way and then all of a sudden, midway or further into it, you realize, well, this is not working. Um, and uh, it takes a little guts to do this. It's not easy to be coming from your council after you made this decision and you thought this is the way to go. But that's the way life is. Nothing's perfect. Uh, I think every one of us on this dais has been involved with an activity or a program and uh, attempted to try something we thought was uh, really a hot idea and it was going to take us away into another world and didn't happen. So this is just one of those examples of life that you learn. But all of those departments need to understand that where our city is, is we need a vigorous economic development department. This is a department, and the person that's going to direct this needs to be out on that road and on that telephone and face-to-face -face with all of the businesses because we are a growing city. Second of all, there was a great demand during this time. A number of companies still are looking, still are thinking, some have semi-planted, and it was impossible to handle it all under the structure that it was. And you realize that, and, and, that, and that's great. So um, I'm hoping that with these directors that everybody understands, today when I talk to the new employees coming in, hey, we're in the service business. It's never going to change. We serve the people. And down to the person at the desk, to the person answering the telephone, to the person that's doing the inspection, they have to, have to get that attitude that the customer comes first. It is service. And sometimes uh, we have to be flexible. And I do think we have areas where we can be. But I think individuals get to this point where they don't use the flexibility that the city offers in many cases. And they're not thinking of the end result of this. So I'm, I'm excited. Um, I'm looking for someone who has a whiz-bang personality and can talk to people and can bring people together and communicate and rapport and the whole thing. That's what we need. Uh, we've got the engineers to figure out the other stuff, uh, and this person can sell our city. So uh, thanks for taking some of the hits tonight and coming before us. And so I think uh, we're ready to cast our votes. Ready? Please cast your vote. Passes seven zero. Thank you very much. Can you believe? Look at the time. Now everybody said this was going to take a real long time. Seven fifteen. So we're not done. I know we still have a special meeting. We're going to go into this afterwards. But before we do, let's get this out of the council. Have anything they'd like to talk about? Accommodations? Where you've been? Who would like to be first? Don't all jump. Okay, I will. Right. Um, I'll this, Campbell. Okay. This past week, I had the pleasure of attending the Greater. Phoenix Economic Council, GPEC, as an ambassador, and listened to an economic, um, I guess he was an economist from Wells Fargo, mm -hmm. from North Carolina, that gave a wonderful overview of the financial world today, Europe, the United Kingdom, the United States. It was just very, very interesting, and um, I enjoyed doing that, and that's all I got to do this week. Well, because uh, my knee went out and I got hurt. So I have to give Councilman Campbell <laughs> a kudos. She is here in brace on her leg yeah, uh, and took a great deal of fortitude to make it to this council <laughs> meeting tonight, and I greatly appreciate it. Councilman Stepp. I had uh, the Arizona Municipal Water Users Association Board of Directors meeting. Mayor Lord attended um, a week ago today. And 
uh, at that meeting we initiated the discussion about the city of Goodyear joining the board as a full voting member. Um, there is, uh, while the meeting I think went in a different direction than we were expecting, I think we were quite honestly expecting it to go poorly um, based on all the information that we, that we had gathered for the last three months prior to that. Um, the meeting went, uh, went pretty well. There, there, while there is support for Goodyear joining the board, um, I still think that there's a hesitancy at um, changing the bylaws of the organization itself. So um, nevertheless, if you run into anybody from the MWA board or the MWA board cities, applying a little pressure probably wouldn't hurt. Um, but I need to really give a shout out to uh, Rob, Matt, and Mark uh, Holmes. Is Mark still here? Mm -mm. Um, for doing a tremendous amount of legwork and gathering of information dating back to 1986 when the city of Goodyear joined um, AMWA and to, to go back and, and produce a, um, you know, a, a a fact sheet uh, that allowed uh, allowed me to speak very, um, you know, on a very educated high level, and uh, I, there's no way I could have done that without without their uh, without their support, and I think that um, that was huge. But I'm not holding my breath, so we may be having another discussion about water and a much different level at a later date, but. Um, that was that was the big thing I'll let well, someone else I have talk to about add, today. Uh, you made a great presentation, Councilman Step, um, and uh, you held your own. So, uh, from from your delivery, there should have been a positive reaction. So you've done everything that you can do that's possible at this time. We're just going to have to pardon me. We're just going to have to wait and see what happens. Next, Councilman Loretano. Um, I, I I'll talk about. Um, we, we all attended up in Australia, the moving wall, and your closing speech <laughs> made me cry. Oh. <laughs> I do have to say that. It was just very heartfelt. It was Thank you. A, about your husband and your own experiences. Thank that did, did make me cry. Um, and for those, I think it was a great learning experience for a lot of the kids up there. Um, if you go on the Life in Australia, which is the community magazine, several students submitted essays, and it's really good to see their perspective from the younger generation that didn't grow up with this war, and, you know, it, it's in the history books for them. Um, so I thought that was very touching, and it was just beautifully well done. I think we were very fortunate to have it. And the other thing I'd like to remind everyone with October is two important months. It's especially for women, Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and you're going to see a lot of pink around for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So those are two important things, I think, that our citizens should know about October. Any other? Mm -hmm. Just yes, Councilman Holman. Just a few. Well, I, I had alluded to it earlier, but I wanted to uh, thank Chief, oh, thank you, Chief Louisi, uh, that the dinner with the fire chief, I think, was very well received. It was very well done. There was a whole lot of information provided. Learned a lot. Um, the CTCA had done a sponsorship, and they did a presentation on um, how to avoid um, reduce your chances of getting cancer. And then there was a presentation um, about fire, uh, the fire alarms in your home that was a great reminder. And, you know, technology has changed there as well. And so I, I was really impressed. The time was very well spent. And I think the citizens that came, while not a huge crowd, were very appreciative of the opportunity. And the second thing I just wanted to mention, for those of us who are wearing light blue shirts today, I don't know if you're aware of it, but today everyone was asked to wear a light blue shirt um, to uh, protest bullying in our schools. And so um, thank you for all who participated because I think that's a real important. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> and uh, I, I just thought I would mention that. Thank you for bringing that up. And uh, I, I have to, oh, I'm sorry, Vice Mayor. 
Just real quick, I was part of the opening ceremony for the Relay for Life at the uh, ballpark. Great turnout, and it's my understanding when we started the uh, event there, they had already met their goal of raising $40,000 for, uh, you know, uh, for cancer. So uh, they expected maybe to exceed that by another 10000 by the end of the evening. So uh, great event, and uh, again, uh, we've got to be able to figure out how to kill that disease. So. Thank you, and Councilman, uh, Vice Mayor, I really appreciate you um, taking over some of these events for me. Um, it has been a very, very busy month, and it's very difficult to be everywhere all the time. And so I appreciate the job. And just on the Moving Mall, for those people that don't, didn't understand Moving Mall, Moving Mall is Vietnam, and it's the people that served in Vietnam that lost their lives, that were incarcerated for seven years. But I just have a personal side story to tell you. I'm uh, knowing I'm going to speak at the final, at the closing of the wall. So I happened to have a conversation with my daughter, who is a writer in Colorado. And so I was telling her about it. And she said, well, mother, I was just at a conference, and, uh, and I met the owners of the moving wall. Mm -hmm. He and his wife, mm -hmm. uh, and there are 5013, you know, see, uh -huh. and not only that, mother, but um, the gentleman that owns the company was in, uh, in uh, the Han Hanoi Hilton with a friend of ours who was the best man in our wedding. So the tie that my daughter met the people that are, are, are doing this moving wall and that he was a uh, prisoner of war with the man that was the best man in our wedding, John Dramisi. It just seemed like uh, somebody Amazing. intervened here and said, hey, this is where you should give this speech. So it's, uh, it's, you just never know, do you, in life. So, okay, with that, to you, uh, city manager, what do you have for us? Thank you, Mayor. Uh Probably the, uh, the one communication that I want to make tonight, and I am looking back there to see if I can still embarrass her. Uh, Romina Cananisho, it's her last night with us. Um, she is, uh, as you're aware, she's taken a job with Honeywell, a, a tremendous career opportunity for her. I hired her seven years ago in intergovernmental relations and had an opportunity to keep piling additional work on her, whether it's grants, neighborhoods, um, support for the mayor and council, communications, uh, and now most recently economic development really helped help me determine um, some of the needs there. Uh, she has been tremendous to work with, I, and I know that she's um, uh, touched a lot of us here over the last seven years, so just want to publicly recognize her. And Romina, wish you well as you head on. Does council want to make any comments? Oh, hell yeah. At this point. <laughs> I think we all, I think she deserves us to have a word from the dais. So, Councilman Stiff? Well, first of all, I think if we're going to speak to Ms. Kennedy, sure she should probably come forward. So, could you come forward, too? <laughs> I'll do your embarrassment, embarrassment one better. Sorry, I don't mean to overstep you, Mr. You Manager. thought you were going to get away with, I know you did, but it's yeah, not there was no happen. way. I have a giant note here that says... Go ahead, Bill. You've got the floor. Anyway, uh, you know, as a, uh, as a new person coming into council, especially as a staff person, um, it's real easy to sit as a staff member and go, I can do what those guys are doing, no problem. And I thought I knew a lot. And I knew a lot about the city operation, but there is so much more to it. And I was not here when Romina was hired. So I had no idea who this person was. And we took office in June that year, and we were at the Arizona League of Cities in late August. And I'm like, hey, I need to sit, find out what you do. I have no idea. And in the course of a couple of hours, I had almost the education of a lifetime. And from that day forward have... Uh, I have been educated every single time I walk into her office and see her. And well, I have to say, when we say educated, we have to say lectured once in a while. Well, that's okay. <laughs> that works we, too. We're not going to let her get away with that, right? <laughs> Absolutely. 
And uh, I feel like this is going to be a grill session. Oh no, I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm this is the Romina time. This is yeah, <laughs> no, I'm not going to tell stories. Anyway, uh, not only did not only did did I get an education about uh, um, about the political system, and I I always said I didn't want to become a politician, but there's more to doing this than just polit politicking, and um, and it it has been a uh, absolute joy to have not only worked with you, but then to also uh, en engage and have a new friend. And uh, for that, I will be forever grateful. So from Bill Stipp, the council person, I will miss you greatly. Um, and as your friend, I am very, very happy for you and wish you the very best. Thank you. Councilman Laura Tano. I wish you weren't going. You know, I understand it's a great opportunity, but it's a loss for not just everyone up here. Every oh, don't cry. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> Sorry. But everyone in our city, and I, I know you are going to do such great things. The one thing I remember about you is give you some wine <laughs> at some of these meetings and no filter. <laughs> you get an honest opinion. You get a straightforward opinion. You don't get a mean opinion from you. You are the nicest, kindest person. You care about your family, and we are so fortunate. And I don't, I don't want to lose you. Be my friend. Stay in touch. We will come visit you. You can take us for, what was that, macaroni and cheese place? <laughs> yeah, when you're, when you're in D.C., we'll come visit you, and we will hunt you down because you are just such a wonderful, spectacular woman, and I see just wonderful things in your future. So thank you for all your guidance and all your help. And we're always here for you forever. So take care. Next. Are you going Vice Mayor? She's down, no, she's going down the road. Uh, I'm going to miss just stopping by, just busting your chops. You know, I used to love to do that. You know what I mean? Uh, I was trying to share with the uh, mayor a little earlier today when we met is uh, it seems to be a skill set I have. I, you know, I just... You know, uh, as far as jacking people up, and then, and I used to love to come by there, and you know those conversations we used to have. Didn't take much with you to get you started, but uh, again, um, going to truly miss you. It's been great, uh, and I know wherever you're going to go, you're going to be a great success. Uh, hopefully, maybe one day down in D.C. as we're going through the National League of Cities, maybe your schedule, our schedule. You know, uh, again at the place that we've. We've hit before over there. We can come and talk about some of the old times on there. But no, uh, I'm sure you're going to do fantastic. I'm, I'm, my understanding is it's an excellent opportunity for you, for your career. And uh, we're going to miss you. But I, I know long term, it's going to be a great move for you. So again, good luck. And I'm sure you'll succeed in whatever you do. Thank you. Councilman Osborne? Doesn't she need to find a good cheese cake place, though, in D.C.? <laughs> You know, Ramina, um, I remember when you were hired and uh, didn't know at, at first, too, like with Bill, what do you do? What do you do over there? And it was, it was going down, you know, to the, the legislature and talking with them. And, and as I learned about what positions you carried, but also your personality, um, I always knew there was strength. And, and quite frankly, many things that this city has accomplished and the level that hits attained is because of your strength, and, and you've helped us get there, and, and I'm very appreciative of that. Um, I also know that I always had a comfort that if Romina's down there, the job's getting done, and, and I knew it because I had that confidence in you. And, and just as, um, as Bill had said that, or, or Sherry had said, if there was a question, we knew you would be able to give us an answer. May not always be what we wanted to hear, and, um, and that's okay, but we knew that we could rely upon um, your uh, intelligence and, and your thoughtfulness on what was going on. And so, you know, I realized when you had announced that you had gotten this great job, um, my first thought was how excited I was for you and your career. And then it hit me, oh, crap, you know, because I was thinking about just as we had had this last discussion with the STA and Cactus League and everything that was going to be coming down the pipe, and I was like, oh, Romina will be there. <laughs> and now you're not. <laughs> and so I realized that, oh, crap, <laughs> we got to get some more strength again. So, you know, we'll miss you. I did not realize that you were moving. I thought you were going to be, like, traveling back and forth. So, darn. <laughs> but thank you very much for everything you've done.
appreciate Council it. Councilman Campbell. We'd like to thank you for all you've done for the city, Romina, and this step that you're taking is a big one, and I, we wish you the very, very best. We know you'll do very well at it, and uh, you kind of used us as your training ground. You know how to put up with all of us here, so you'll do very, very well with Honeywell. Best of luck. Thank you. Councilman Holman. I can only reiterate, Romina, that I uh, do wish you very well in this next step, and and um, pray that the door is open and successful for you. Well, it's me. I just want you to know you've been the fabric of the mayor's office. Um, you were the person uh, from the very beginning. I can remember going to Romina's office because, of course, I came into office under unusual circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, having, uh, she had the opportunity to work with the same person that I replaced. So I can remember going in and sitting down and having a coming to Jesus meeting with her and saying, now listen, you know, I want, and, and we went back and forth about, because I wanted to be sure where the allegiance was. And uh, she came right forth and, and uh, she respected uh, the past person and she respected me. And we, so we had a great dialogue and I think it's uh, continued uh, to be that way because you are a woman of truth. Uh, and that's uh, admirable. And then the other thing with the legislature, you are so knowledgeable in the legislature. And guys, she really tried with me. But as you know, um, I kind of went off course this year. And so uh, um, we all did. We all did. <laughs> uh, but I felt, uh, I felt absolutely 100% calm about the direction I took. So I have no regrets. Um, but so you're probably leaving at a good time <laughs> because you don't have to go down there with me now. So whomever takes the place will have that special time. And you know we will have special moments this next year. So um, I was thrilled for you. I told you a long time ago that your intellect is quite high um, and that there was a place in the world uh, for you that far surpassed the job you were doing and that you had the ability. It just uh, meant that you had to grab that opportunity. And I know that it was a hard decision for you to make because the culture in Goodyear, in the city of Goodyear, in the government of Goodyear is so good that the thoughts of leaving into strange country and, um, and then the thoughts of now you're not going to be stationary. You're going to be on the move, traveling worldwide. You're going to be, she's going to be in all parts of the, uh, the nation. Um, so um, it's, uh, it's a vast world out there, and you're going to get a taste of it. Uh, but you, I think you'll do a great job. They're, they're fortunate to have you. I think we, whoop, the city's done a great job of training her. That's why she got the job, because they knew about our priority-based budgeting, and they knew about all, <laughs> all the stuff we've done. And so, so I mean, she's going with all this vast information. Oh, so anyway, we really wish you well. And we will see you in Washington when we take our trips. And we do expect you to find a good place for us to wine and dine. <laughs> Pardon me? Cheesecake. Oh, for cheesecake. And no singing taxi drivers. Yes, yes. So uh, we, we wish you well. Thank you very much. Um, I really appreciate all of the comments. I'm honored and humbled, and it has been an amazing seven years. Um, every single day that I come to work, I am proud of the city. I'm proud of its leadership. I'm proud of its council. You guys are amazing people. Your hearts are in the right place, and that's what makes you such a great council, is you're not in it for your individual selves. You're in it for the betterment of the city. And so as you move forward, just always remember that, because that's what makes you different from the rest of this valley. You're just an amazing group of people, and you're going to do so well, and I can't wait to see the next steps of where the city's going to go, because this leadership is unprecedented. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. So is there anything from the city? All right. So just to give you an idea, the next meeting, it'll be a work session on the 20th at 5 p.m. And then a special meeting following and then a work session on the 27th and the 